Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to talk about my new electronic typewriter of Smith Corona PWP145. Now this is a typewriter that was made in 1992 and it is one of the electronic daisy wheel typewriters that came out during the end of the typewriter era. So by that time personal computers were pretty well established and the internet was starting to become something and throughout the 80s, when the decline of typewriters began, they started to transition into these hybrid devices that were not electric in nature, electric and mechanical. They were now electronic, meaning that they actually had microchips in them. They ran relatively basic software. They were essentially very slow computers combined with a mechanical typewriter. And I think they're pretty cool because they represent this evolution and this transition from a technology that was one of the only ways to create printed material for nearly 100 years into the digital age. So I think these are really, really cool. Um, they're very easy to find online if you want to buy them. They are not very easy to learn about, though. There's not a lot of information about these, which is interesting because... Smith Corona, Panasonic, Brother, uh, and other manufacturers made many, 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 many models of these for, you know, 20 years or so. Uh, I remember seeing these at Staples, you know, in the late 90s when I was in middle school. They still had a couple electronic typewriters around that you could buy. Electronic typewriters are actually still used. Uh, they're used in areas, specifically in the government, where they have to fill out forms a lot, so they slide the form in and they fill out the form on a typewriter. But anyway, this is a pretty cool find for me and I'm pretty excited about it and I wanna walk you through the features. So as many electronic typewriters have, it has a case and a cover. It also has a little handle here. If I can find it. A little handle and make it easy to carry. It's not super heavy, it weighs, I don't know, 15, 20 pounds or so. So, not too bad. Not a, a laptop by any means, but not terrible. So if we take this cover off, we will reveal the keyboard and the screen. So it's a little bit interesting looking because it has keyboard. It looks very much like a PC keyboard. It even has the equivalent of a control key. This red code key makes these Buttons that are in red perform different functions. It also makes these items at the top align to the number row. There's cursors, so you can move the cursor around, which depending on the mode you're in will do different things in your document. Um, and you can set tabs, you can do bold printing, you can underline stuff. There is a built-in dictionary and a spell checker in here that'll alert you if you type something incorrectly. This is a correctable typewriter, so you can actually erase things, which is pretty cool. Uh, you can save information, you can recall information. There's an address book that you can enter addresses in and automatically print labels and things. So it can do a fair amount. Uh, back in the day, the reason people would buy these instead of a computer was often due to price because computers were, you know, $1,500, $2,000, $3,000. These were in the two to five hundred dollar range i believe so if you needed to type documents they were a much more economical way to do it even when personal computers were showing up everywhere they were showing up at homes they were in businesses already they were showing up at schools a lot of people would still buy typewriters because they were cheaper so let's turn this on and talk through some of the features so you can see there's this little LCD display here. Mine doesn't really stand up. So the best I get is pretty flat. It has your old school contrast control. So I can bring the contrast all the way up and make it basically disappear. I can bring it all the way down and make it black. I can put it somewhere in the middle where it's readable for me. Uh, maybe not for you though. There we go. That's a little better. So this typewriter has two modes. It has what is called word processor mode, which is what it's in now, which is essentially treating it like a computer. 
and then it has type mode, which treats it like a typewriter. So let's, let's just start with type mode. That's the part that is the least familiar to me. I've got plenty of experience with computers. I don't have a lot of experience with typewriters, so let's talk about that. So we'll flip it into type mode, and you'll see it still uses the screen in type mode. It shows you uh, your, like a ruler, and it shows where your margins are, and it tells you what kind of settings it has. So whenever you turn it on and off, it forgets everything. When you turn it into type mode, it has default margins. It turns the spell checker on. Um, it turns caps lock off. Uh, and then the one feature that I always have to remember to turn on is this thing called auto return. So by pressing code and return, it turns auto return on. And what auto return does is as you get close to the right margin of the page, it will automatically return and go to the next line for you. That way you don't accidentally type off the page. So let's load some paper into this thing. So we do that by popping this open, pushing this back and sticking in a piece of paper and using the paper in button, which will suck in the paper to the right place. And you just slap that in. So there we are. We have it loaded. So this is a daisy wheel typewriter. And what that means is in here, instead of your old school typewriters that had type bars that would come out and slap the page, this has a wheel that goes around, and whenever you type a letter, the wheel spins to the correct letter and it gets hit with a hammer, which hits this piece of film ribbon and actually imprints the character. And the film ribbon is not like your old school ink where it's you know wet and you can you actually got ink on it and it kind of it can splatter and bleed onto the page a little bit. This is more like a laser printer. This is a piece of film, and with pressure, that film leaves a mark. So it actually like smacks the letters out. So if I type something like, uh, and I bring that up, you will see that the printing is pretty dark. It's pretty good. I'm gonna take the camera off of the tripod for just a second here. The printing is pretty dark. And if we look, I don't know if we can see it. Can we see it? Oh, you can see it a little bit over here. Right about there, you can see the E. You can see W E A R E, we are. So when the print head hits, the ribbon, it actually tears out the letter. So the ribbon contains every letter you've printed on this cartridge, which is pretty cool. Okay, we're gonna close this back up here. And I'm gonna do the fun part of using a typewriter and I'm just gonna move the paper on my own to my own line. So this typewriter can do a little bit of formatting. It can do bold. So if I do code bold and I type some letters, you can see it actually did some bold text. And it's interesting the way that it does that, it actually hits the letter three times. So it has to hit the ribbon, move it, hit the ribbon, move it, hit the ribbon of the film, move it again. So that's, if you're talking about usage of your ribbon, that uses up a lot of ribbon because it has to hit, it types three letters every single time. It also can do underlining. So it can underline just the words. or it can underline everything. So I could make like a title. And if we bring that up, you can see the difference. So each word is underlined on the left, 
the whole title is underlined on the right. Again, controlled with the code key. I'm not exactly sure why some of the formatting is on the keys themselves. So like bold is on the B key, but underlining is way up here. I guess that's because this is a line and it's supposed to line up, but I don't know, it's a little weird for me. Anyway, so I find this kind of neat, the way that it types. Um, it's cool to see what you're typing directly. The other thing that fascinates me about these, well, one thing is you can use these cursor keys, which is kind of neat. One thing that fascinates me about these is erasing. So if I make a mistake, like everyone's favorite, TJE, one, you heard a beep, because TJE isn't a word that's in its dictionary, so it thinks I spelled it wrong. So what I can do is I can have the typewriter correct that for me by pressing the correct button. And I'm gonna bring this in so you can see what that looks like. All right, here we go, correct. So it just, I was a character off. It just erased the E. Let's do it again. It just erased the J. So what that's doing is there's a second piece of ribbon in here called a correcting ribbon. And that is this thing over here, this guy, this like white clear thing. And what that does is it has a material on one side that literally rips the film imprint off of the paper. So if you look closely, you can actually still see the imprint, but if I type over that, you won't be able to tell unless you look really closely. And just like the film ribbon, the correcting ribbon also keeps a record of everything that it does. So if you took this typewriter right now, on the film ribbon, you could see everything I typed. And on the correcting ribbon, you could see every letter that I deleted that was ripped off. And in some cases, you might see entire words. Because this typewriter not only has letter erasing, but it also has word erasing. So it's kind of smart and it keeps track of the words you type. So if I fix this, Oh, that was supposed to be quick. I can press the word eraser button and it will erase the entire word. Bye-bye, word gone. And all of those letters are now on my correcting ribbon. Let's see if you can see them. Mm. No, not yet. I think it's because they're, they're still up here, but they're on there, I promise. I'd like to take a moment to look closely at how this typewriter actually types a letter on a page. There's a daisy wheel inside, which is a wheel of different letters. There's a print hammer behind the daisy wheel, which hits one of the letters into the film ribbon, and then that hits with such force that it actually leaves an impression on the paper. I'm gonna show you that in slow motion. Correcting works in a similar way. There's a separate ribbon that's kind of like a piece of tape that will be popped up and it'll tear the last letter off of the page, which is also a cool process to watch. So we're gonna watch that in slow-mo as well. So I'm gonna correct a letter. The other thing that's cool about this is that you can center things. So if I go to the next line and I press code center, it'll actually put it into like quasi word processing mode. This isn't full word processing mode, but this is kind of word processing mode. And I can type a title. I can even underline it a little bit. 
and I can use bold and underline if I want. And then when I'm done, I press enter and it will type it for me, center. And you hear it. And cats love typewriters, let me tell you. They think they're very, very cool. They like to explore. Let's switch to word processor mode again. I'm not a typewriter person, so I don't know a ton about the typewriter itself and using the typewriter features, but I'm very interested in the word processing and the hybrid nature of this. So let's put it in word processing mode. All right, so we are in word processing mode and we have a lot of options. This is a command line UI that we have here, um, you know, reminiscent of like your DOS interfaces, your Apple II interfaces, things like that. Uh, not so much Linux because I don't have to type the commands for it, but I do have to choose from these menus. So you can create a document by pressing one. You can set the format of your document, tabs and things like that with two. You can print a document with option three, save it to a disk with option four, or call it from a disk with option five, erase something from the disk with option six, merge the document with personal cards, which is printing like address labels and things like that, or you can format a disk. And this has a, an interesting story about it. When I got it, I was very excited that it took PC formatted floppy disks like this one, just a 720K DOS format floppy, put the floppy in and it wouldn't read it. Tried to format it on the typewriter, it wouldn't format it. I ended up taking it apart and discovering that the belt that went from the floppy drive motor to the spindle had disintegrated, so it couldn't turn the actual disc. So I put a rubber band on it, put it back in, and it actually worked, which was very surprising. So that's one of the cool things about this. So anyway, if I want to create a document, I can go in there. I can choose create a document, it will open it, and I basically have a small word processor here. Doesn't know what PWP is, so it beeped. Obviously the advantage of typing on the screen is that it is easy for me to correct things and I don't have to waste my correcting ribbon to do it. So I could type a very long document here if I wanted and then I can save it by going back up to the menu by pressing code and tab because that's menu. It will close the document and save it to its internal memory. In fact, you can get statistics on how much of the memory is free at any time by looking over here. MR 100% is the memory remaining. Or if I press code R, it'll give me actual statistics. So it'll tell me that I've got 151, I don't know, bytes, I guess, of document memory uh, and a bunch available for the total. And if I had a floppy disk in, it would tell me how much memory is there as well. So as you type, it'll tell you, eventually you'll fill up the memory, you have to save it to a disk. But if I wanted to save it to a disk, I could pop a disk in over here and then choose option four, which will save it to the disk. It will read the disk, it's very squeaky. And you'll see that I've already got a couple documents on here. These are documents that end in the PWP extension, which is Smith Corona's proprietary file format. Apparently, according to the manual, most of these models in this series could also save ASCII files. And if I could save an ASCII file, I could open it up as a regular text file on a computer. Because this particular model cannot save an ASCII file, Mr. Cat, all I can get is these PWP files. And I haven't tested it yet, but I've read online that you can open them in a text editor, but they're full of like garbage characters and things like that. So it's not great. But what I'd like to test is taking a text document from one of my computers, putting it on the disk and seeing whether it will kind of work here if it has a PWP extension on it. It probably won't have carriage returns. I'll probably have to reformat it a little bit, but I'm curious to see what it'll look like. 
Anyway, though, if I wanted to save this on the disk, I just give it a name. And the names have to be DOS compatible names, so I can't have spaces. So I save that, it writes it to the disk, and there we go. And it makes that horrible squeaking sound. So once I've done that, I can either, you know, read a different file off of the disk and load it in, or I can print. So if I move the paper a little bit, I go to option three, I say print. I can change some settings here if I want, press return when I'm ready, and it will print my beautiful document. And if you notice, it is printing it backwards, which is pretty neat. So it tries to be efficient and as fast as it can. I mean, it's not super fast when you look at it. It takes a little while to print, but it will not move the head all the way to the beginning of the line before it prints. It will start where it is. It'll move it to the closest edge of the paper and it'll go backwards if it has to. So if it's printing a document, it'll go forward, then backward, then forward, then backward, then forward, then backward to be a little more efficient. And not every typewriter did this. I think in the 90s they probably did. But back in the 80s when, you know, these typewriters were competing with, you know, the IBM, the IBM, IBM wheel writer, the wheel writer didn't do that to my knowledge, at least the first versions. So I would have to go back to the beginning every time. In terms of printing, this is not fast for sure. So I wanna show you quickly what this looks like when it prints a long document. Again, if you're using it as a typewriter and you're just having it print as you go, it doesn't seem slow. But if you're trying to print something that is saved, it, it can definitely take a while. So if I load paper, get rid of this paper, and I put in a new sheet, and I put this into demo mode, you can see how long it takes to print what might represent a regular document. And we have another cat visitor joining us. Get ready for this. Type my name. This is as fast as it goes. In this case, you notice it's not going backwards. I'm not actually sure why that is. Thank you. 
it was a pretty big time investment. It took a while to get that all printed, but there it is. This is the demo page. It talks through all of its features. There were versions of these that could actually act as printers. And I mean, you could plug them into a computer, but even in that case, if, if this took ASCII files, I could save, you know, a text document that was pages and pages long, pop the disc in here, and then just let this go to town and use it as a printer. It would be a very, very slow printer. Even in the eighties, when daisy wheel typewriters came out, there were also daisy wheel printers that you would plug directly into computers. And those tended to be faster. What I was hoping to do with mine was take advantage of the three and a half inch floppy disk drive that it includes that can read DOS formatted disks. I wanted to take text files saved on a computer, put them on the disk, read them out onto the typewriter and have it print the document. But unfortunately, my model is one of the few in this series, according to the manual, that cannot read regular ASCII formatted files. It can only read proprietary Smith Corona PWP files. So unfortunately, I can't save a file off of a computer and print it out on this typewriter unless I can convert it to a PWP file. I took a look online. There are no converters available. It's a pretty simple file format, so I may be able to write one that'll convert the files. But anyway, that's a project for another time. Well, I hope you've enjoyed my quick tour of my Smith Corona PWP-145 word processing typewriter.